All right, hi. Chapter 12, FRA Motor Power and Equipment, 2012. Uh, Federal Railroad Administration added Part 238 containing um, Passenger Equipment Safety Standards, or PESS. On May 12, 1997, 64 FR 255-40 issued a response for petitions reconsiderization through the final rules published on July 3, 2000. April 2, 23, 2002 and June 25th, 2002, the 64 Federal Registry 42840, uh, 41284, 67 uh, Federal Registry 191970, 67 Federal Registry 48292, and respectively, on October 19th, 2006, FRA published a final rule that addressed various mechanical issues relevant to the manufacturer efficient utilization and safety operation of the passenger equipment trains that have arisen since the issue of uh, passenger equipment safety standards rule 71 FR 61836. Additionally, on February 1st, 2008, January 8th, 2010, the FRA published final rules amending the Part 238 to enhancement add requirements regarding passenger train emergency systems, or PTES. These uh, 73 FR, Title 73 Federal Registry 637 enhances requirements for the full strength of the front end of the cab's multiple unit locomotive 75 F Federal Registry 1180, respectively. The original um, original pa passenger equipment safety standards regulations became effective in July 12, 1990. The guidance constrained contained in section compliance manuals address specific issues and questions raised in the issuance of the issue of the rules. The um, information guidance for the specific provisions not covered in the manual, the preamble discussion contained in the publication note that should be consulted and reviewed along with any other related FRA compliance manuals, um, Chapter 15 of the Operating Practice Manual, which includes guidance regarding to the uh, Passenger Train Emergency System final ruling. The FRA intends to update the portion of this manual on a regular basis to include new issuances, guidance concerning the Passenger Emergency and passenger equipment safety standard provision. The following provides the guidance with the um, to be used by the federal state inspector with conducting the inspection of passenger equipment for compliance with the federal laws and regulation. Although the inspector has enforcement discretion regarding whether or not the recommended after of defective violation is important agency and enforcement policy to be adhered by to every inspector where conducting an inspection so uniformity that the enforcement activity is achieved. The procedures provided in both this manual and the FRA general manual should be observed when assessing the proper appropriate corrective actions regarding the non-compliance with the passenger equipment and safety standards. It should, not be no it should be noted that there is significant interplay between the provisions contained in this part and the provisions contained in the other parts of the federal regulation. There includes the locomotive standards of LSS and Part 229 safety standards of M 231 and passenger train emergency preparedness regulations contained in Part 239. When motor power and equipment determines the defects of uh, uh, Equipment inspector defects um, determines defects issues on passenger equipment which may not be de conducive to safe operation. The inspector must decide if the defective is part of the 238 defective should be documented with the F16896 inspection report. Warns the issue of violation. Warns the issue of special notice for the repairs of Part 216. Should be reported with the railroad unsafe condition not in encompassed with the federal regulation. The following discussion addresses various issues that have arisen during the implementation of the passenger equipment safety standards provided with the guidance enforcement of the issues. Part 238, subpart A, general 238.3 applicability guidance. The requirements for the Part 238 do not apply to the tourist scenic or historic or excursion operations. Even they operate or over the general railroad system, transportation of, of passengers to a particular destination to non particular to a principal purpose of the tourist or scenic railway, the recommend requirements also do not apply to circus trains. 238.5. For the complete definition, prefer, please refer to the Title 49 CFR Part 238 and 238.5. The following definitions most relevant, most uh, most often required in this section for the purpose of conducting motor and power and equipment inspection. The actuator means a self-contained brake system, the component with the generates force to apply the brake shoe brake pad to the wheel and disc. Actuators typically consist of cylinder piston and piston rod. The actuator moves the direct p action of the piston brake piston with applying retarding force for the load of the self with the brake. Reads brake sh brake, brake pad sh shoe pressure. The brake indicator means the device actuated by the brake cylinder pressure, which indicates whether the brakes are applied and released. The device is operated means other way directly off the piston movement, such as pressure switches located in the brake pipe and lower pressure head. Calendar day means any time period during the, from one midnight to the next midnight or one given day. 
The same as a calendar day inspection for the rare locomotive safety standards. One inspection for each of the day, period of the day, and the equipment is used in service. A locomotive and multiple unit. Um, MU. Locomotive MU means the rolling equipment self-propelled by any of the four source, poor power source intended to provide transportation for members of the general public. However, the term does not include the mul any multiple unit locomotive propelled by steam power unless it is used in a haul, inner city, or commuter passenger change. And like the definition of railroad locomotive safety standards, the multiple unit in this rule includes the multiple unit passenger locomotives for power powered in a number of sources. Passenger car means a ro railway rolling equipment intended to provide transportation for the members of the general public includes self-propelled car cars designed to carry the passenger baggage mail and express or express the term includes passenger coach cab car multiple unit locomotive in the context of the articulated equipment passenger car means the segment of the railway rolling equipment located between the two trucks the term does not include the private car all right passenger car is defined and includes the multiple unit locomotives whenever the passenger car is used for multiple unit locomotives include unless expressly excluded multiple unit locomotives as is traditional locomotives remaining under the requirements of found in part 229 with the exemption of those in arms in part 238 not extremely expressed in part 229 the dead man pedals and the altars multiple units are required to be the inspected qualified maintenance person um, QMP such inspections may satisfy the requirements for the local mode of daily inspection under the part 229 if includes all items in this part. However, a locomotive daily inspection under Part 229 will not satisfy the need for the exterior mechanical ex inspection by the passenger equipment safety standards unless performed by the qu odd qu quality maintenance per 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 personnel. Also cover all the components per per parts addressed in Part 238. A, in the traditional um, locomotive that receives the daily inspection Part 229 employee other than the quality um, qualified ma ma maintenance personnel other than the items not uncovered in the railroad locomotive safety part 229 address and the passenger equipment safety standards must be inspected by a qualified maintenance person per per practitioner or dynamic braking alternate dead, ma ma dead man pedal Power car means of a railway car vehicle that propels terrier two passenger train is led to the vehicle and terrier two passenger train or both. Power cars where occupied or unoccupied are considered pa pa passenger equipment and must comply with the inspection testing maintenance or the ITM requirements of 238-503. The FRA reviewed and approved the railroad I I I inspection testing and maintenance program contingent with uh, on meeting of the exceeding requirement for locomotive inspection acts for power cars. All right, private car means rolling equipment that is used for excursion, recreation, and private transportation purposes. The private car is not a passenger car, private railroad operating with the inner city passenger or Amtrak, Alaska Railroad, or a commuter train are regulated in Part 238 as a type of the passenger equipment. See paragraph 15 for the definition of the terms 238.5. Private car is the subject number of the requirements of Part 238, principle to the product. Protect the safety of the passengers hauling the private cars, railroad employees handling the cars. These include the requirements of daily 238-303, um, periodic 238-307, exterior mechanical inspections, air brake inspections, 238-309 and 311, safety appliance, and 238-229, a reference parting, 231, suspension system, 238-227. All right, passenger cars with definition do not include the private cars are subject to numerous additional requirements, including requirements of daily interior inspection, 238-305, interior fittings, fire safety, emergency lighting. Private cars are not um, directly supported by the fire safety requirements for the emergency prepared requirements in Part 239. No nonetheless, the passenger that haul the private cars need to consider the possible passenger presence of such private cars that they are developing fire safety analysis Part 239 and emergency preparedness plan. The FRA notes that the Amtrak requires a detailed annual inspection for private cars operating the Amtrak MAP PC1 as well as comprehensive running gear inspection overhaul of all private cars over 40 years old Amtrak's form P MAP PC2 for the Federal FR considerization completed Amtrak M MAP PC1 to meet the requirements record for the periodic maintenance for the private cars required instead to 238-307. If a private car is not being operated, the inner-city passenger commuter trailer is still subject to the various requirements depending on the nature of the railroad operation. For instance, the private car opening the freight train is subject to the air brake maintenance requirements in Appendix B for the Part 232 Safety Appliance Standard in 231. Additional private cars are subject to safety glazing in Part 233 unless car are historically or antique and built in 1945 or earlier. 
private rail cars, regulatory compliance question and answers. Most of the private cars follow the same regulation as other passenger cars in terms of the safety. Do you know private railway cars need to report FRA? Does the FRA ever inspect these equipment records? In general, private railway cars, railroad cars, or private cars operating in the Amtrak commuter trains are regulated in Part 238 as passenger equipment, which includes passenger cars transporting general public locomotives, baggage cars, and mail cars, private cars. As such, the private cars are subject to requirements to apply with the man on passenger equipment, including requirements daily, periodically, exterior, mechanical inspection, air and brake inspection, safety, appliances, still steps, handhold, handrails, suspension system, safety, um, wheel inspection, will, uh, where it's all the items that is not compliance with the safety regulations and danger to the safety of the passenger hauling this with a with a private car Passing cards, which do not include private cars, are subject to additional requirements such as daily inter interior inspection, interior equipment fastening requirements, fire, fire safety standards, emergency signage requirements, however, the passenger rules, railroad and regular halls, private the cars need to consider their possible presence of, of a private car in their train, whether they are developing a fire safety analysis or emergency preparedness plan. In addition, Amtrak required detailed an annual inspection of the private cars it operates and comprehensive running gear and an inspection overhaul of all private cars over 40 years old. And generally, if the, if the car is not operated with the Amtrak, the commuter train is still subject to the air brake requirements in Part 232, safety appliance standards in Part 231, step handholder handrails, uncoupling and leverage handbrakes in statute, Title 49 the U.S. Standard Code or of the U.S. Standard Code, it is subject to glazing requirements in Part 223. And unless historically antiqued it, before 1945, used in it for excursion, educational, recreational, private, public uh, um, purposes, Statute 223b3. Private railway cars do not have to report the railway cars over the over other than the mechanical related information FRA have with the could be responsible for the failure to maintain proper the records which subject the inspection review the FRA motive power and equipment inspectors the operating of the railroads have primary responsibility for operating complaint equipment and there are trains there was an FRA inspector generally focused on their intentions upset Eventually, if the railroad has any questions as to compliance, or they often follow up the owners with the equipment so to avoid the little ability from FRA with help to ensure the compliance with the FRA regulations. 238.9 Responsibility and Compliance the Section establishes two liabilities depending on the nature of the defect inspection, which non compliance, which is part of the being alleged. The strategic liability standards apply to the non conformity with any of the safety plans, power break with the provisions of Part 238, including with the inspection provision addressing such components. Paragraph A1 makes it clear that the railroad may not use haul permit or to be used hauled on its line, offer entry to change or any except interchange any train or equipment with one or more conditions not in compliance with Part 238 power break or safety appliance provisions. Involved in inspection provisions, a reasonable person standard is applied to all other conditions not in compliance with Part 238. Other safety appliances power brake provisions, paragraph A2 makes it clear that for other safety appliances power brake defects, a railroad may not use haul or permit the use of haul on at its time. Off, off, offer its interchange except the interchange of any train equipment with one or more conditions not in compliance with Part 238 if the railroad has actual knowledge of the facts given the rise of the violation or a reasonable person acting in circumstances exercising reasonable care would have the knowledge. Strict liability applies to use and haul equipment of the defective safety appliance if the passenger piece of the pa passenger equipment is discovered in the defective safety appliance power brake and is being not being used to the haul pursuant to statutory provisions, Total 49 U.S. Standard Code 20303, movement of the de de defective equipment provision of the statute 23815, appropriate enforcement action must be taken if the railroad is unaware of the existence of the defect. It cannot be considered properly hauling for the equipment for the repairs under the statute 23815. Knowledge of the defect needs not to be established. In Inspectors expect to use sound judgment together with guidance outlined in general manual and chapter 3 of this manual when deciding with the issues of violation and repair report is appropriate. Reasonable person liability standards are somewhat lower standard liability strict liability standards noted above. The standard railroad subject to the part is liable only if and anew they had noticed should have known and existing either the defective condition on the equipment failure to inspect the equipment is prescribed in the part. Thus, when seeking the violation of the requirement provision other than the safety appliance power break requirement, the FRA must establish that the railroad had acknowledgement of the condition or reasonable power exi person exertion 
exercising reasonable care would have the such knowledge. Consequently, a vision, re vision violation report must discover so the inspector's basis to find the railroad new. Reasonable should have known the presence of the defective condition. Inspectors should be specific as possible as detailed information. Paragraph B of this section stated that under the establishment violation, the FRA must prove that the equipment was used or hauled in the defective condition. The evidence of an actual haul the defective equipment is also always sufficient to support a violation. In addition, the section makes clear that the FRA will consider a piece of equipment in use that subject to potential civil penalties prior to the departure after the railroad has or should have completed its required inspection is deemed ready for service. The FRA is not requiredly required to wait for a car for, with defective safety appearance, appliance, power, brake to depart and engage in actual haul in order less, in order to assess violation. If an inspection relies above the interpretation, the violation report must ensure establish that the railroad has completely and necessarily inspection capable of discovering um, all alleged defective condition. Therefore, the evidence must include the violation report, which establishes an inspector's basis for the finding, be as specific as possible, include names, and if available, note if there's any enforcement flexibility, may not appropriate the approach in many situations and in many circumstances, the best approach is to establish the actual use or movement of the equipment. Paragraph C clarifies the FRA position requirements of the parts applicable part, not any of the railroad subject to, the, to this part, but also to any sub person defined in statute 3385 that performs the function required in part 238. All various sections of the regulation address the duties of the railroad. The FRA intends the uh, any person who performs any action BF on the behalf of the railroad, any person who performs any action covered by this record is required to perform the action in the same manner required by the railroad, potentially subject to the FRA enforcement action. 238.15, Movement of the Passenger Equipment with Power Brake Defects. Guidance. The paragraph B provides the equipment that is found with the defective air brake during a Class 1A or A1 brake test made only by the moved and non-revenue train without passenger after the meeting an additional condition of the movement of the passenger equipment with the brakes became the defective in route the train's movement must comply with the applicable operations in paragraph d and e of this section the defective equipment must be tagged in for information record recorded pursuant to the paragraph c2 of this section secondary braking systems such as dynamic braking must may be continued in service and other conditions found in statute 238 303 e 15 1 and 2 when railroad movements are within the brakes have, that become defective in route, inspectors should consider more than just equipment conditions to decide that it is safe to unload passengers at the next station. They should look at the location of safety passenger overloading the equipment, weather, and number of the a number of concerns. The railroad should not decide cited for ex exercising good judgment to ensure the safety of their passengers. If the train reaches final destination, all passengers are detrained, but the railroad must then move the equipment for the repair while out of service without the passenger. This includes trains that operate with the final destination, but the crew would normally change and ends, then perform Class II brake tests to operate the brake equipment towards the repair facility. The return must be conducted without service without operations. Passengers. Paragraph E. The paragraph E places the operating restriction on the passenger passenger train completely inoperative. Popper or brakes on the front or the rear unit. The com coupler mates are similar. The equipment is physically joined with the trailer container operated with the rear passenger train with a braking problem resulting from the truck braking being cut out and does not constitute completely inoperative brakes for the rear of the train unless the bra both brakes are cut out. Section 238.17, movement of the passenger equipment with other than power brake defects. The off-site quali um, qualified maintenance per product Practitioner could make um, required determination to defect if running gears involved with the report via the radio or telephone without being on the scene. Part 238, subpart B, safety planning and general requirements. 238.109, training qualification designation program. Paragraph A, beginning on January 1st, 2002, each of the railroads shall adopt the training qualification destination designation program of employees contracting that it perform any of the inspection testing performance required by this part shall have the trained such employees and contractors in accordance with the program. Guidance, if the railroad uses the contract or any other railroad provided with the required training, the railroad should adopt the training plan being used and keep good records. If FRA believes to maintain good records in the cornerstone of the training requirements, the testing inspection maintenance required is to perform the quality maintenance per, per, per Practitioners that identified each of the section required the example would would one would one one person qualified to be performed the exterior calendar mechanical inspection finds a wheel with a condemnable defect after the condition is reported the car moves the wheel true machine for the repair the rule requires that the inspector of the qualified machine mechanical practitioners um, perform exterior calendar date mechanical inspection there's no requirement for the wheel true operator no requirement for the qualified maintenance practitioner inspect the equipment unless the real release from the wheel for true facility. 
Paragraph B8 requires supervisors to comply with complete with the covers of the employees and from with the supervisor, including the refreshing training and guidance. Supervisors are discussing requirement. First line supervisors are qualified maintenance personnel, and these supervisors must complete a program that covers the same material as the qualified maintenance personnel employees that supervise the requirements. Only the first line supervisor. Paragraph B10 designates the writing of them within with each employee contractor has knowledge and skill necessary to perform self related safety related tasks that are part of his or her job. Guidance are not required to carry out the card of their list class qualifications, but railroads may maintain a list of employees' qualifications may be able to provide with the information FRA upon request. 23819 rim stamp state straight plate wheels. Paragraph A1 except provided within paragraph A2 of the section after November 8th and November 1999. No railroad shall place or continue in service any vehicle or other private car that is equipped with a rim shaped straight plate wheel if the brake shoe acts on the tread of the wheel for the purpose of slowing the vehicle. Guys, there is only a rim stamp straight plate wheel while trade, tread braking. This does not include hub stamp straight, straight, straight wheel plates. Part 238, subpart, inspection, testing, maintenance requirements for Terrier 1 passenger equipment. 238.303, exterior, exterior calendar date, mechanical inspection for passenger equipment. Paragraph A, except for the provided in paragraph F of the section, each passenger car, each unpowered vehicle used in passenger train shall receive an exterior mechanical inspection at least once each calendar day that equipment is placed in service guidance. The requirement applies to the passenger as defined included multiple unit passenger locomotives and all other equipment hauled in the passenger train. A calendar day inspection, daily inspection is required for any of the day of the calendar day passenger used in service. Calendar inspection is inspection is not governed by the amount of time the equipment was used. The passenger car arrives at 12 to 20 in the morning on any given day would require to receive the calendar mechanical inspection on that day. If a long haul passenger daily mechanical inspection departs sometime Time after midnight, then becomes defective. It sets for the railroad would not be reasonable for the perform the daily inspection um, that day the, for the day that was used for service set out and would have the performance inspection prior to the placing into another train before moving the car to purpose the repair. Daily inspection of multiple unit locomotives, control cab locomotives performed under the requirements of locomotive daily inspection statute 22921 do not fill the requirements for daily maintenance mechanical inspection of passenger equipment unless performed by the qualified maintenance practitioner or qualified for the inspection conventional locomotives can be inspected by the people with the railroad deems qualified statute 22921c who are mo not qualified maintenance personnel with exemption of um, those specifically addressing passenger equipment safety standards not covered in locomotive safety standards such as dynamic brakes and all alerters Statute 238.305, Interior Calendar Day, Mechanical Inspection for Passenger Cars. Paragraph C5, the word emergency brake valve are legibly stenciled and marked near each brake pipe with the valve shall known shown on the adjacent badge plate. Guidance of the required language of the emergency brake valve is preferred for the inspector should use the good judgment in countering some of the vibrage of the stencil making of the large number of the valves marked on the brake emergency use only. Inspectors should not, um, no exemption to the things or other make that markings that meet intent. 238.307, periodic mechanical inspection of maintenance cars, pass, sorry, pace, passenger cars and unpowered vehicles in the passenger train. Paragraph, <coughs> paragraph A, railroad should conduct a periodic mechanical inspection of all passenger cars, unpowered vehicles used in passenger as required by the section of the warranted with justified develop, developed and pursuant to paragraph A2 of the section, periodic inspection conduction part 229, the chapter satisfied the requirements of the section with respect to the features inspection guidance. The requirement applies to the passenger cars as defined includes with the car locomotive and the multiple unit passenger locomotives, those inspected with the performed and part of the 92 day annual biannual inspection required as part of the locomotive AC standards are not required to be included with the periodic under passenger equipment periodic inspection. Paragraph B, each periodic, periodic mechanical inspection required with the section section perform with a qualified maintenance person. Guidance, the inspection equipment must be performed by the qualified maintenance person. If an defect has been identified, must be prepared when the equipment is returned to service. There's no requirement that the qualified maintenance personnel um, make repair and reinspect the inspection equipment for the repairs or repairs are completed. Paragraph C: The periodic mechanical inspection should be specifically included with the following interior exterior mechanical components should be inspected not less than frequently than every 184 days. A minimum of the inspection shall determine. 
guidance. Um, the 184 requirement was issued after the 100-day requirement contained in Statute 239.107b2 supersedes these requirements. Paragraph D, an interval not exceeding 368 days, periodic me medical, mechanical inspection, so specifically include inspection of the following. Two, the handbrakes, um, as well as the parts and connections, determine that they are proper condition to operate as in either the date of the later of the inspection, and it shall be entered on the form FRA 61849A. The st suitable stencil tag on the equipment maintained electronically provided with the FRA ha has the record due upon request. During the drafting of the rule text requirements, the testing and recording were copied similar requirements applicable to the lo only locomotives as a result for the form specified in the rule. F61849A blue card is a locomotive form. However, the FRA did not intend to limit the use of the on and the low bar record, record of the blue card for keeping testing information under this section, especially equipment that is not a um, locomotive. Therefore, the FRA makes clear that the outboard, onboard record may keep in the manner so chosen by the railroad as long as it contains all the record information that is logical. The record does not have to be a blue card. Further, the railroad may also stencil information to keep information in electronically as provided in this section. Section 238.309, Periodic Equipment Maintenance, um, Guidance to Locomotive Air Dryers. Looking over air driver, air drivers are not specifically addressed in federal safety laws. See Title 49 CFR Part 229, U.S. 49 U.S. Standard Code 20103. In order to the FRA to determine the air drivers and an imprudency of locomotive for the purpose of Title 49 U.S. Code Federal Regulation 2497. Because the air drivers are not addressed in the federal safety laws, no violation should be taken of the defective air drivers. And a number of waivers granted with the Federal Railroad Safety Board to extend the intervals between the braking maintenance and the similar cleaning and repairing testing commonly referred to as COTS. Um, both the freight and Title 49 CFR 229 uh, biannual 29 testing passenger Title 4 CFR 238-309 periodic brake equipment maintenance. The board required the functional air dryer as a condition for the waiver of the locomotive covered by the waiver that requires a functional air dryer is beyond the current brake maintenance interval within the regulation is found to have the defective air dryer. The locomotive will be not complaint with the Title, 40, Title 49 CFR 229-329 or Title CFR 238-309 because of the overdue brake maintenance for the no for the dry, defective air for dryer. The waivers do not explain how the FRA will determine whether the air dryer is defective violation reports must explain the base of the inspector termination of the air dryer is defective and must include the copy of the applicable waiver for the report as a note inspector should not rely on the air dryer's color indicated to make a determination paragraph b each single car is tested recorded in the section performed a qualified and maintenance person person Guys, as previously discussed, inspection requirements of C, Title 39-109 and 328-307, the single car testing the performed the qualified maintenance practitioner shall be noted that the discussed above the regulation does not require the associated work such removal or replacement valves to be performed by the qualified maintenance practitioner to be reinspected by or to be reinspected by the qualified maintenance practitioner after repairs have been completed. Amtrak requested a grant approval for the alternate standard standard for the performing single car testing and Talgo equipment. The request was assigned with the document number of FRA 2003 a, a copy of the discussion and letter available for the section compliance manual titled Motor Power Equipment Waivers. The American Public Transportation Association requested granted an approval alternative standard for the performing single car testing of the passenger equipment. The approval allowed the railroad to use the original APTA American Public Transportation Association code identified with the passenger equipment safety standards or alternate test code dated March 23, 24, 2003, which allows the test to be performed in pressure of the brake system operated railroad after the free use of either test as needed. The request is signing the docket number FRA 2005-20053. Copy of the test is copied available at the American Public Transportation Association at such and such website. 238.31.3, or 238.313, the requirement to conduct the Class 1 brake test is paragraph A. The section includes all the passenger cars not self propelled and so exclude the multiple multiple locomotives as other self propelled vehicles. Passenger equipment will be moved to the passenger railroad with the exemption of the equipment moved for the compliance of the statute 238.15, movement of the passenger equipment for the power defects. This includes mail trains power equipment without the passenger on board with the self and being moved on the passenger railroad. The FRA would consider their cars to be either revenue service that's designed to carry passenger traffic. Paragraph E, each commuter short distance intercity passenger train shall receive a Class 1 brake test sign once each calendar day the train is placed in continuous passenger service. 
If the train is used in service on any of the, any given day, regardless of the time used, it must receive a Class 1 brake test. The test is performed by the servicing being the time of the clean completion of the service. Paragraph D, each Class 1 brake shall be performed by a qualified personal maintenance. Guidance. The Class 1 brake test must be performed by the qualified maintenance practitioner qualified for the particular test. The test must not use non practical qualified maintenance practitioners to manipulate brake valves during the performance of the test. Paragraph F7. F7. Brake pipe leases do not exceed 5 pounds per square inch and per minute and leakage will affect the service performance. Guidance. Brake pipe may not exceed 5 pounds per square inch and per minute, but does not need to test unless the leak has affect the operation of the train backs. Accordingly, any violation reported on this section must include an explanation of how the leak will affect the service performance of the brakes. Paragraph G4. The equipment is provided with the brake indicator. The brake indicator operates intended with the guidance. Most passenger cars, multiple units are equipped with the indicator lights, but some are equipped with the multiple indicators located on each side of the equipment. In such cases, only one set of these indicators per side of the car must be in compliance. 238.315 Class 1 air brakes. Class A13, the train has not been disconnected from the source of the compressed air for more than four hours. The performance of the Class 1, one brake test guidance, minimum pressure, ground pressure, compressed air to be con uh, considered sufficient in P 60 PSI. Paragraph, computer short distance intercity passenger train provides with a continuing late night service pairing beginning to prior midnight completely in the daily operating cycle after the meeting night without performing a Class 1, Class 1A brake test. The Class 1, Class 1A brake test shall be performed on such a train before starting a new day daily operating cycle. All right, um, guidance. Um, some computer computer systems operate service beyond midnight. The requirements to perform in a class one prior to the perform first morning departure of Britain makes clear the train is not required to stop during its operating cycle and recall orders to receive class one, class one A brake test prior to the first departure of the calendar day. The British provision does not, however, relieve the railroad from responsibility of statute two thirty eight three thirteen for the forming class one A brake. Class 1 brake test on each calendar day for the train and use of the train operating midnight so must receive a Class 1 brake time brake test sometime on the, each of the two days in its use. Inspectors should use a good judgment determining that if the train is required one Class 1 brake test prior to the first morning to departure. In the contrast, the trains are not operated in the night, for the railroad has plenty of time to conduct the required tests. The trains operate through the night and may only lay up the short periods for the time an hour or two requesting. Requiring a test for the first morning departure may not be per practicable. Paragraph except as provi provided with the statute 23815B, the railroad should not use their hall passengers and train passenger service for a location where a Class 1A break has been performed or was required to part by this part to be performed with less than 100% op operative breaks. Guidance 238 and 315. The earlier discussion of the condition of the movement of the passenger equipment with power direct under brake defects prepare failure to preserve any condition for the movement of such equipment to deprive the railroad benefit the movement of the repair, making the railroad any responsible for the liable civil penalty under the section. Paragraph F. A class 1A brake test shall be performed on the air pressure when the train's air brakes are will be operated and should be determined and ensure that the class 1 air brake test does not require the trains equipped with the electro pneumatic brakes to have electro pneumatic features tested. The only required class 1 test electro pneumatic feature is defective is cut out and not considered defective until the class 1 is performed and the equipment may be continued in service. Paragraph F1 The brake pipe leakage does not exceed 5 pounds per square inch per minute and the brake pipe leakage will affect the service performance. Brake pipe. Guidance. Brake pipe leakage may not exceed 5 pounds per square inch per minute, but it does not need to be tested unless it will affect the operation of the train brakes. Accordingly, any violation reports based on section must not include an explanation of how leakage will affect the service performance of the brakes. Paragraph F5, F3. For the multiple unit, this utilizes electrical signal to communicate with the service application brake application on a pneumatic signal to promulgate an emergency brake application for the emergency brake application function as intended. Railroads are not required to physically test the dead man and pedal other emergency control devices during the Class 1, Class 2, Class A1, Class 1A, Class break 2 brake test for the exemption electrical multiple unit equipment that it uses electrical signal communicated service application using a pneumatic signal for the emergency application system. Multiple unit equipment must have an emergency application of its emergency control devices tested and determine the device function as an intended. Railroads are required to test the dead man pedal and other emergency control devices during a Class 1A brake test. All right, 238, 317, um, 
238, 317, Class 2 brake test. The Class 2 brake test does not require transportation trains equipped with electro-pneumatic brakes to have electro-pneumatic features tested. This is only required at Class 1 tests. The electro-pneumatic feature is defective in its cutout. It's not considered defective until the Class 1 is performed, but the equipment may continue to be in service. Paragraph A5, when an operator first takes charge of the train except with the face-to-face -face relief, Guidance of face-to-face -face relief would include the quality, quality, quality maintenance pr pr practitioner and other persons participating in the Class 1 brake test of relieving the crew member as well as the crew relieving another crew. Paragraph D1, the brakes of the rear unit of the train applied with the release and the response to the signal engineer brake valve control leading to the control unit or gauge. On similar devices located in the rear of the train and the cab, the rear unit indicates the brake, the pipe pressure changes the properly communicated at the rear of the train guidance. If the railroad place devices the rear of the train that would provide a visual indication of the changes of no brake pipe pressure, the indication can be viewed on the front of the train and it fulfills the requirements to test. Paragraph D2, the multiple unit locomotives that utilize electrical signals to communicate as a service of brake application on the pneumatic signal to promulgate an emergency brake application. The emergency brake application functions as intended. Railroads are not required to physically test the dead man pedal or other emergency control during a Class 1 or Class 2 brake test without, ex with the exception of electrical multiple unit equipment using electrical signal to communicate in service application using the only pneumatic signal for emergency application using the multiple unit equipment but must have an emergency application of its emergency control device tested to determine the devices intended but the railroads are required to test the dead man pedal and other emergency control devices during Class 1 brake test. Alright, um... Moving on, 238 subpart F, inspection testing maintenance requirements for Terrier 2 passenger equipment. 238.503, inspection testing maintenance requirements. Paragraph D3, the trains miss schedule, miss a scheduled class 1 brake test mechanical inspection due to the delay in route may be proceeded to a point where the class 1 brake test and technical mechanical inspection was to be performed. Guidance inspector need to be very careful in applying the provision of the FRA view of the delay in route and can only occur between terminus points. Um, Boston and Washington would not be considered terminus points since they are those locations the tray lay up and given in the new train symbol. The FRA believes that the approach consistent with the rule intent. Thus, an LCA train is delayed in a route and proceeded with either to Washington or Boston. It may not be turned in turn if and not cannot complete a return trip provided with the time frame. All right, Chapter 13: Your Passenger Train Emergency Preparedness Part 239. Wow, that's serious.